morning, everyone, those of you who are in person and those of you who are joining us from home or vacation or wherever you may find yourself. Welcome as the Spirit gathers us all as the body of Christ uh, in this place this morning. Um, I have a bunch of announcements as soon as I get my mic here adjusted. Um, some really wonderful things to celebrate. First, today we commission three brand new Stephen ministers. You might remember, uh, it's, yeah, woohoo. Um, oh, when did we start? Last fall, I guess, we started recruiting, and, um, and Ellen Meyer and Julie Gerstenberger and Carol Dunn all stepped up to the plate, and they've been through some pretty intense training and have even started their continuing education. And what we need now, and we need from all of you, are um, our care receivers, uh, folks with whom they will meet weekly to walk alongside, to companion, um, and share uh, the, the burden um, that you may be going through. So if you would like a Stephen minister or think that that might be a good thing for you, that there's something in your life that you would appreciate a companion to, um, to talk with and pray with weekly, uh, please um, have a conversation with me and we will, we will make a match uh, for you. But today we commission these three um, Stephen ministers and we, uh, and we are grateful um, for their training, their skills, and what they bring to ministry in this place. Um, we fed 287 people this week. We had a number of walk-ins. Um, I believe I told you last time the Ukrainian presence continues to grow in our community, and, and um, it has been gift and grace to get to know all of our friends who come to us for food. Our ecumenical Ubuntu group uh, I told you last week, has received a family, an Afghan family, to sponsor and support. They are moving into a home today. Woohoo! Um, we don't need help with that. Um, but this week, we will be meeting with them and assessing needs. And so please watch your email. Uh, continue to pray for the Mahmoudi family, two parents and five children, um, as, as they become um, uh, part of our Rochester community. Staff evaluations are up and running today. Yay! Fill those out. Uh, you have till October 23rd. We really want to hear from every one of you, so please fill those out. Ripples of Wellness has a potluck on Tuesday. Woo! Real life people, real life food. What plant-based is, is uh, on a sheet in the table between the two stairways. If you'd like to join them or are curious, please pick up one of those papers. You may see some cans lined up on our steps. We begin our Thriving 500 Food Challenge. If we collect 500 cans of food for our food pantry, we get $500 for our food pantry. It's a no-brainer. Bring in um, some cans, please, as you are able. Tonight, Hans begins a study on the foundation of our faith and how our faith as Lutherans ties to all of the stuff going on in the world today. So this will be an engaging and wonderful uh, conversation and study. Uh, it begins at 6.30 this evening. You can come in person or join by Zoom. If you need the Zoom link, um, you can see Hans or myself and we can get you tied up to that. <sighs> That's a lot and there's more in your bulletin. So uh, please uh, read your bulletin for, for details about all of these things. And John Corman is here today to give us an update on the trees. Yes, the Christmas tree fundraiser. Yeah. Um, some of you may be wondering when we'll be setting up the Christmas tree lot, or unloading the trees, or maybe just wondering if we'll have donuts this year. <laughs> However, this year we won't be doing the Christmas tree sales. There were many contributing factors that led us to the conclusion that it was time to discontinue this program. But let us remember what the good things we gained from doing the Christmas tree fundraisers. There's many things that it did accomplish. This was a, uh, a multi-generational program within the church where there was something for everybody there, regardless of your age or your abilities, we could, everybody contributed, everybody stepped up and helped, and we thank you for that. That was really great. Also, the tree, 
sales brought in um, our neighborhood. This was a, a neighborhood community came in. You know, we got to meet the people in our neighborhood as they came to buy the trees. They told stories about, about themselves and about living here when the church was built. Some of them even wondered, you know, what's the church like? So they came in and got to see the church. Um, so we grew together. We got to know each other better that way. And also, over the time, we raised over $22,000 for our youth program. Talk about a great thing. And there were many, many people who contributed on this. I see most of the people out here in the congregation this morning were there helping. That was great. It was very successful, and I thank you for that. You were out there, you know, signing up. You were out there collecting uh, money. You are out there standing in the rain, the snow, and the cold. You are out there helping. Thank you so very much. One person was there um, year after year making certain we had enough people signed up. We had enough people to work. And if we didn't have enough people to work, she was right there doing the work herself. So I liked it. And, and sometimes she was actually kind of an in-your-face sort of person, but she got the job done. Rhonda Eastland, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And, and let us not forget the founders of this program. I don't see them here this morning. Tara and Jim Hartman, you know, they're the start of this. Thank you, Jim. But going forward, in, in 2023, the, uh, the Boy Scouts that, that are in the church here are very interested in doing this program with our help. So we look forward to, to doing that and, and helping them in, in that endeavor. Um, so this year, however, you'll have to get your trees from somewhere else. So, but in 2023, hopefully, it'll be the Boy Scouts doing the tree sales. Thank you, and God bless. I invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as the prelude is played.
I invite you to stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. <clears throat> God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
let us pray. Benevolent, merciful God, when we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us, that with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite the boys and girls to come forward. guys. How are you this morning? Henry, do you know Zach behind you? This is Zach and his sister Grace. And this is Henry and Eleanor. Hey, you're going to stand here with me today, okay? And we're going to talk about, last week we started talking, um, Grace and Zach, about the building and why we do what we do and why things are the way we are. And last week we learned that the ceiling goes this way. It represents a ship that keeps us safe from storms. And when we're in here, we're, we're safe and we're together. Today I wanna to talk about all the colors in this space. What colors do you see in this space? You see red, yeah. There's red and there's blue, and there's, yeah, there's white in the cross. Do you see other colors? There's purple and there, it looks pink, doesn't it, up in, those, up in the glass? So those colors all actually represent something. Our church year, green, yes, and there's green. I'm wearing green, there's green here, there's green there, and there's green in our windows. Let me tell you about the colors, because colors mean something in the church. The green means ordinary time. Ordinary time like when the grass is growing and the plants are growing and the sun is shining, or in the winter when it's a little darker, we have ordinary time. It's, it's time when we go to school and we go to work and life goes on as ordinary and Jesus promises to be with us in those times. And then the blue is the start of the church year and that is the color of hope, hope. And the gold in the windows is the color of royalty, like when Jesus comes at Christmas, or when Jesus comes in, um, in Easter, when he's resurrected, we have gold that's special and wonderful and beautiful, and purple is Lent. And that's a season where we reflect on how much we need Jesus. And what else is up there? Well, red. Red is on certain festivals, and it's... Um, it's the color of blood, people who have died for their faith. And are there any other? White. White is the color of purity, that Jesus makes us pure, washes us clean from our sins. What did you say? Orange. Orange? Oh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think maybe that's a faded red. Because orange isn't really part of the church here, but that's good observing on your part. Okay, well that's our colors and that's why we have them. Let's thank God for all of the colors of, of the rainbow. Hey God, thank you. Thank you for the seasons. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for reminders of hope and love and purity. Thank you God, even when we don't want to hear it and we and all God's children said, Amen. All righty. Thank you, guys. Let us pray. Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, the voice of truth and grace. Amen. A reading from Habakkuk. 
the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see that he will, what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it, for there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they, they shall, shall soon wither, wither like, like the, grass, the grass, and like, and like the, the green, green grass, grass fade, fade away. away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take, Take delight, delight in the Lord, who shall, shall give you your, your heart's desire. desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. The Lord, Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light and the, and the justice, justice of your case like, like the noonday sun. sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from, from anger, anger leave rage alone. Do, do not, not be provoked, provoked. It, it leads only, only leads to, to evil. evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. Uh, reading from 2 Timothy, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Jesus Christ, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, of faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on, on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I'm sure that he is able to guard that until that day, what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Jesus, Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in, in us, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? <laughs> would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you've done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> have you ever been somewhere you see people you know you tromp on over to them you stand there and you realize you've just plunked yourself in the middle of a conversation two friends chatting it up and you have no idea what they're talking about yet you smile <laughs> you nod <laughs> you try to sound intelligent all the while you're incredibly awkward that ever happened to anybody yeah yeah and, and you're thinking, I got nothing to add to this, and, but there's no way to back out. So you're just kind of stuck there in the middle of a conversation. Well, imagine trying to preach on one of those. Just saying. Would it have killed the lectionary people to have included the entire chunk of what was going on? No. <sighs> Increase our faith. Increase our faith is an awkward place to pick up a conversation. What on earth prompts somebody to say that? Well, to give you some context, last week we had that story of Lazarus that's a nightmare in and of itself. But Jesus tells the story of Lazarus to the Pharisees, who he describes as lovers of money. And he told the chasm and the heaven and hell sort of a scenario going on. Okay, that was last week. And so once Jesus has put the lovers of money all in their place, then he turns around and he speaks to the disciples. He's got some things to say to the disciples, his followers, things very specific to life together in community. And it's hard stuff to hear and inwardly digest, right? Because sometimes we get all high and mighty and we have these weird expectations that people in church will... We just don't have problems with each other. We all get along just beautifully, don't we? We all just love each other to pieces all the time, right? So we put on our happy face. We sit in our assigned pews, although I have noticed since the pandemic, some of you keep swapping it up on me. We sign up for our service projects, and in general, we avoid the people we just don't like. And I've told this story before, so bear with me if you've heard it, but the church that we went to before I became a pastor, a pretty big Sunday school, and my kids were in Sunday school with a family uh, that had four girls. They had four girls of various ages in the Sunday school and you know after it was afterwards it was always kind of a mess as you're collecting your children and everybody's vying for mom's attention and Sandy's four girls were no exception you know mommy look at what I made mommy Ashley's looking at me she just touched me I have to go to the bathroom I don't want to go to church I want to go home can I have ice cream you know you get the anybody been a parent you get the drill and finally one week Sandy just lost it and she just exploded and she went Girls, when we are in church, we are a happy family. As if we can change our stripes just by walking in the door. So Jesus is talking to the disciples about the realities of community life. And so let me back up a few verses and tell you the whole story that Jesus says, don't worry, it's only five verses. Jesus begins, occasions for stumbling are bound to happen. But woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better for you 
if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. I love that line, for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. See, Jesus is not re referring to tiny little children, little humans. Jesus is referring to disciples, to disciples as little ones, as little ones, because Jesus knows what we can be like. Jesus knows exactly how awful we can be. Case in point, have you met my grandkids? Some days, it's just a battle to keep them from bashing each other in the head with something. But then some days, it's a battle to keep us from bashing each other in the head with harsh words or judgments or avoidance behaviors or, or confrontational behaviors. We're human and Jesus is well aware of that. We are the little ones. It's not a term of endearment. But he goes on to say, and this is the hard part, be on your guard. Be on your guard. Because if another disciple sins against you, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, pay attention, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times a day and says, I repent, pay attention, you must forgive. If someone sins against you seven times in one day and repents seven times in one day, you must forgive. No wonder the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Because being in the forgiveness business is hard work. It is such hard work. Sometimes it's the hardest work when the person that is sinning against us is someone we know well. When we are hurt by somebody we love, it hurts about a thousand times more than when it happens with someone we don't know at all. And Jesus is talking to his disciples about how we treat each other how we come together as a community, how we hold one another accountable, how we repent to one another, how we seek forgiveness from one another, how we do indeed forgive one another, forgiving over and over and over and over if that's what it takes. Sometimes I think it would be easier to command a mulberry tree to get up, uproot itself, and jump into the ocean than to continue to forgive. No wonder the disciples cry out, increase our faith. Forgiving is hard work. It is such hard work. Yet Jesus says that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to forgive each other than like a servant is supposed to serve. It is no more noble than that. It is our call. It is what we do, and it begins in this place. No wonder the disciples say, increase our faith. On August 9th, 1992, a man named Paul Keller set fire to Trinity Lutheran Church in Linwood, Washington. The church, that church was in the final stages of a building project. There was so much energy and enthusiasm for, for new mission and ministry that was going to start in this place, and then poof, in one night it was all gone. And as you can imagine, the congregation was just heartbroken and devastated. It took six months to catch the arsonist who had set fire to other churches in the area. And Pastor Richard Rouse tells the story of this congregation in his book, Fire of Grace. And the, the congregation eventually formed a relationship, actually, with the arsonist and, and ministered to him in prison, but not until they worked through some tough 
struggles. It is a book honest in its retelling of the internal turmoil of that congregation, beginning when the pastor decided he just had to himself go and visit this man. He had to go visit him, and he did. And the next Sunday, he recounted the incident in his sermon. You can imagine how well that went over. One man approached him afterwards and said, listen, pastor, I'm all for this forgiveness stuff, but don't you think you took it a little bit too far? How do you even know? How do you even know if he is sorry for what he did? And shouldn't we expect that first before handing out forgiveness? So, okay, it might be okay for you to go to this arsonist fellow and forgive him, but I hope you don't expect the same from me. This book um, is a magnificent account of a congregation that wrestles with the work of forgiveness because it's not easy work to do. And, and Pastor, while, while what I'm talking about is, is, I know sounds like an encounter with a person outside of the church walls, it began with some really big work inside. Anger at one another over what had happened and differences of opinion. Anger at the pastor for being so liberal with his ability to forgive. It, it became hard, honest conversations, admitting, confessing, if you will, people's inability to forgive one another and others. No wonder the disciples cried out, increase our faith. But friends, faith isn't something we can put on a line graph. And I know that upsets you engineering types. Look, we got 25% more faith than last year. It, it doesn't work that way, people. It just doesn't. Nor is faith something that happens to us, like, Lord, increase my faith, and boom, it just comes. No, faith is a gift from God that you already have because it came to you in your baptism. Faith came to you in your baptism. We have what we need. We just need to practice it. Practice. That's why faith is a practice. And faith is a discipline. What is necessary is that we take these moments when we're at our worst. When we're at our worst. And we exercise our repentance muscles. And ask for forgiveness. And also that we take those moments when somebody's standing in front of us vulnerable and repentant and exercise our forgiveness muscles and offer it unconditionally, even if you know that tomorrow you're going to have to do it again. We have to practice and practice and practice. That, my friends, is kingdom living. It's kingdom living. I mean, where else are you going to find a people dedicated to forgiveness? That's pretty amazing. Only in the body of Christ do we live out Jesus' call to love one another in tangible, felt, real ways. Real ways. So I'd like to talk to you honestly for just a minute. Because um, it's been a really tough couple of years for all of us. It's been a hard couple of years. And a lot of us are feeling hurt, isolated, forgotten, forsaken. And if that's your experience, reach out. Tell somebody. If you're concerned about a fellow disciple you haven't seen or seems a bit different, talk to them. Reach out. Ask how they're doing. Listen to their pain, their confession, even their anger. Be Christ to one another. Be the one who walks alongside each other. Call one of the pastors if we've caused you hurt. Enlist the help of one of our new Stephen ministers. If it feels like I'm asking you to pick up a mulberry tree and toss it into the ocean, let's come together in faith, lifting one another up, offering reconciliation and hope. We have the faith. We just need to continue with our practice, what we've been doing. Up our game just a little bit. We haven't been, friends, dropped awkwardly in the middle of a conversation. This work, this talk, this is ours. This is ours, and it's always been ours, that we've had 
with Christ and with one another. It's ours, and as hard as it is, it is a gift. Dear Lord, help us to practice the faith you've already given us. Amen. Let us confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace, Hear our prayer. 
for parts of the world ravaged by a natural disaster, relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. God of grace, hear our prayer. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. God of grace, hear our prayer. For victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, especially. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving that you have abolished death and for the saints who have died, Bring us all to eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Hear now the deepest desires of our hearts. Prayers for all of the people that were affected by Hurricane Ian. Prayers of welcome for our new Afghan neighbors. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love you richly provide for our need. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night at which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup make of us the body of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, be fed. For those of you at home, this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Come.
And at this time, I invite Pastor Hans to join me up front for the commissioning of our Stephen ministers and for um, Carol and Julie and Ellen uh, to meet us in the front here. Dear brothers and sisters, you have been equipped to serve as Stephen ministers at Messiah Lutheran Church. Listen now to the words we find in Scripture. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving. Sisters, each of you has been comforted by God with the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for you. We ask you now to join in serving our Lord and those in our congregation and neighborhood who need to be comforted. As the Lord Jesus has responded to your needs, we ask that you strive to be responsive to the needs of others. As the Lord Jesus took the burdens of the world on his shoulders and has been a friend to you in troubled times, we ask you to be a friend to those who are burdened under the stress of daily life. As the Lord Jesus patiently listens when you turn to him, we ask that you be a patient listener in a hurried world. As the Lord Jesus has broken down the barriers that separate you from God, we ask you to heal divisions wherever you find them and to strive to make people whole. As the Spirit of Christ has given you gifts for service, we ask you to use your skills and your talents to help people whom you serve and to pray for them. As the Lord Jesus has shown his care to you, we ask you to help this congregation grow as a caring community through your own caring ministry. As the Lord Jesus has revealed his presence to you through faith, we ask you to share your personal experiences of faith with those around you so that they too may celebrate the presence of Christ in our world today. Dear friends, are you prepared to meet those requests that we ask of you? I am. Are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others, to support, encourage, build up, and comfort people in all their needs? If so, please say yes with the help of God. Yes. And now we ask you, members of Messiah Lutheran Church, to open your hearts to the ministry of these people and to pray for them, that they may be effective servants of Christ. Are you prepared to meet this request? If so, please answer yes with the help of God. Yes. We also ask you to accept their ministry when you need help, to allow these individuals to work with you as you face struggles in your life, that you might receive care and support and help from your Christian brothers and sisters. If you are prepared to meet this request, please respond yes with the help of God. Yes. And are you three, Carol and Ellen and Julie, prepared to serve as Stephen ministers among us? Yes. Because you have promised faithfully to serve the Lord Jesus and his people as Stephen ministers, I commend you to the care and guidance of the Holy Spirit as you in turn care for others. Work hard. Use the skills you have learned, releasing the gifts and talents that the Spirit of God has given you so that you might be a blessing to the people you meet and care for. Continue to study. Reflect on the situations you, are, you encounter. Pray for the people whose lives you are privileged to share. Be free to share your own personal frustration and needs with others so that you might receive the same kind of care and love that you offer them. 
Act boldly and without fear, for Christ is with you. And may the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, we ask you to take Carol, Ellen, and Julie into your care. You have blessed them with particular gifts and talents and have provided them with an opportunity to learn more about helping people. May they serve you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May they be quick to serve, patient in listening, willing to share themselves with people. Give to us thankful hearts for them and show them in times of stress and satisfaction a special measure of your mercy and joy. Keep them strong in the faith you have given them for the sake of Jesus, who cares for all of us in every way forever. Amen. And so I have certificates, and they're in alphabetical order. Yes, no. Julie. And, and... Carol, so this must be yours, Ellen. Certificates as well as um, your little starter kit. There's a folder in there with everything you need to start uh, making your visits and reporting back. And, um, and again, I remind you all, if you get a Stephen Minister, it's all confidential. Uh, and this is a wonderful gift to expand our ministry. Let us welcome these women into our ministry fold. Woohoo! Thank you. <clears throat> and now God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace, and may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen.
Go in peace to practice your faith. Thanks be to God.